we got to know that we cannot be casual about our prayer life and yet expect to live a successful and a victorious life. Again, prayer is not just for begging. Prayer is to connect with God. What prayer does, <clears throat> it aligns your spirit man with the Holy Spirit. So his presence, his wisdom, his plans and purposes for our lives can be fulfilled through us. Most of the time we are focused only on what we think we should be achieving in life. Not considering or consulting with the Holy Spirit God. If we understand we're men and women of destiny and that God has a plan for our lives and that these plans generally are far bigger than what you can achieve in your own strength, you will know how helpless you are without God. But thank God with Him I can do all things. Don't give up. Don't cave in. Don't throw your arms up in the air and say, I don't know what's going to happen. No. If God is in charge of our lives, even if it seems impossible, begin to pray and say, Lord, I'm available. Flow through me, my God. Let your will and your purpose be fulfilled through my life. Let your name be magnified. And I'm telling you, my friend, the more we can spend time in His presence praying in the Holy Spirit, not just from your lips, but from the depths of your heart. Because listen, deep calleth unto deep. Amen? So from the depths of your heart, we need to learn to call unto God. And He promised, when I call, He will answer. So if you're not finding answers, that means the call is not really from the depths of your heart. Because God is not about to lie. He never lied and He will never lie. So if he has said it, he's about to do it. But we have to learn to connect with, his, with, with what is demanded of us and connect with the Spirit of God so he can flow and fulfill his promise. He is moved when the cry come from, comes from inside and not just a, a lip service kind of prayer. You know, Let the prayer rise from within. We need to learn to be a people of prayer. Father, speak to me. <clears throat> let your wisdom prevail. Let God give me light that I can see, that I can understand, that I can flow. We desperately need God. I'm telling you, the days are not getting better. They may even get worse. But in the midst of darkness, my light has come. He will never leave us in darkness. Wherever we are, His light will shine and He will guide us. So that we are not trapped like the rest of the world, but we'll always find a way where there is no way because His light has come. Amen. Amen. Be encouraged. Don't look at yourself as somebody like any or anybody that is in the world. You are special. He said, you're the apple of my eye. Praise God. He said, I've carved you on the palm of my hands. You are special. God loves you. God wants to care for you. And God wants to provide. But we have to learn how to approach Him. You know, you might have a lot of money in the bank sitting there. It is your money. But there is a protocol to be able to extract that. It is yours. The name, your name is on it. But you can't just walk into the bank and say, give me my money. They will not. They'll say, who are you? No, no, I have money. I can prove it. Yeah, you can prove it. But use the protocol to get it. So also we have all the promises, but there's a protocol involved in coming into His presence and laying hold on what God has promised for us. It doesn't happen automatically. 
That's why we are here teaching every Sunday, every Friday as to how we can develop our relationship with God and understand the protocols involved so that we can possess and we can lay hold of and draw what God has already promised for us. Come on. And one of the most important ingredients in the protocol or one of the most important steps in the protocol is prayer. Do you know that Daniel was a man of great wisdom? Look, the demonic world, the Medes and the Persians, there were spirits. There were principalities. Remember something. I'm telling you something. Listen carefully. When Daniel prayed, God sent Gabriel. Gabriel was stopped by who? Who? It was not just a normal devil. It was the prince of Persia. There are principalities that control territories. Now watch this. Daniel was appointed leader over not only godly aspects, but even the magicians, the astrologers of the demonic world. So you can see how they recognized that Daniel, the, 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 the kind of connection that Daniel had in, with the supernatural realm was far greater than the connection that they had or the supernatural world that they could move in. Come on, amen? So there, is, there are supernatural powers. Watch, some things don't, you cannot bind and cast out because there is a hierarchy in heaven, in the heavenly realm, both in the, in the spiritual, divine spiritual realm and also the demonic spiritual realm. As powerful as God is and as powerful as Jesus was, He did not cast your sin away. Can you cast your sin away? No. There was a price that had to be paid. There are things you can cast away, but there are things for which you have to pay a price. Don't trivialize. Don't say, well, I can just cast out any devil. Yes, you can. There is a, there, there is a realm at which as you grow in the spiritual realm, you have authority that is, re, that is given unto you to operate at that level. Try opposing and try to try binding a devil that is above your capacity, you're in trouble. You're biting too much that you cannot chew. You ha that's why prayer is so important because it is in prayer and with the understanding of the word you grow in your capacity and you grow in your authority. When Gabriel was stopped, look at this. It was the prince of Persia who had authority over that land. There was a territorial spirit. For him to move aside, Gabriel, my, sorry, Michael had to come. Can you understand? When there was a battle going on over the body of Moses, to be buried. The Satan was there and Michael was there. And they were battling over the body, the dead body of Moses. And you know what Michael said? The Lord, what, what's the right word? The Lord punish you or the Lord uh, um, adjure you, rebuke you. Listen, why did Michael not say, I cast you out? He never said, I adjure you. He said, the Lord adjure you. You know why? Because Satan, when he was Lucifer, had the authority that was given to him by God. He was of the top ranking angels. Even after he fell, he's recognized as a power. 
In the story of Job, he appears before God. You with me? So you have to understand, listen my friend, there is so much in the word that we don't understand. And it is only as we pray that these understandings and revelations will come to us and we begin to see, oh my God, I never heard this before. I never saw this before. When Jesus was casting out the demons from the person in Gadarene, you know what they said? Don't cast us out of this territory. There are spirits that are assigned to territories. So when we're praying, it's not praying, Lord, get more people saved. There are spirits that are controlling people from not getting saved, from not listening to the word, for being distracted, from being dis dissuaded and not coming close to God. So we, as we pray, God will open our eyes so we can battle against these things and bind those forces wherever we need to bind. And we move in the authority of God. Because, but you see, it's not just saying, Lord, give me more souls, give me my, more souls. Yes, that is the cry. But you have to understand understand there is an operation that is involved in the spiritual realm that is to be dealt with that's why we need to pray a praying church is a thriving church but most often we're turning a church into an entertainment center hardly much prayer happens that's why we are more, we are more, people are attracted to the entertainment, but not the power. The power of God has to be exhibited. The power of God has to be manifested. The power of God has to set people free from all kinds of bondages, addictions, sickness, disease. That's the gospel. Getting people saved, getting them out of the bondage of the enemy and bring them into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. But that doesn't happen by, through entertainment. It happens through power. Power is accessed only through prayer. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. Praying. Who was with him? The devil. Who showed up after 40 days? Not the angel, not God. Come on. Let's get a little brighter. Understand we have a real enemy out there that does not want us to succeed in life. That does not want us to be a testimony for the glory of God. That wants to douse our fire for God and kill the appetite for prayer. To do that, he doesn't say, don't pray, don't pray. He gives you distractions. Oh, you can pray. Watch this first. You can pray, eat. You can pray, sleep first. So these are all legitimate excuses for not praying. You can justify, the re, the justify your action for not praying, but the result, the end result is what? You become weak. And that's his plan. Because when you're weak, it's easy for him to come against you and pull you down. So church, please listen to what I'm saying. We have a real enemy out there that plans to kill, steal, and destroy everything. So whether you like it or not, force your flesh to pray. We have to learn to pray. Stand up. Let's pray for five minutes. Come on. I don't want to just give a lecture. Let's do it. Come on. Open your mouths, everybody. Start praying. If you're a man who has been praying every day, you won't find it difficult. But if it's been a week since you prayed, then you'll find it boring and, and difficult. Come on. Open your mouths and pray loudly. And pray that God will touch you this morning. God will speak to you. And something will happen in your lives. Come on. The fire of the Holy Ghost will burn within you, causing a new desire to pray. Father, this church belongs to you. We are your people. Holy Spirit God, birth a new fire in us. Birth a new hunger in us birth a new desire Lord God to pray to seek you for your presence oh God to seek your presence 
Oh, Spirit of God, come, come, fall afresh upon us. Let your power flow. My God, I pray not only for those that are here, but those that are watching online, those that have not been able to come, those that will be coming in the second service, those that are in other campuses. Lord, I pray, wherever our members are, wherever this family is, God, come, fall afresh. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Fall afresh upon us. Lord, desire, desire, hunger to pray. Pray. Lord, I cry, Lord, I cry unto you that today as we listen to the word of God, the power will flow. Lord, lives will be blessed, Lord God. He bodies will be healed, Lord. Hearts will be transformed, my Father. Our minds will be renewed by the power of the word of God. Come on, pray. Lift up your voice right at the back. We got to be a church that knows how to pray. Pray, pray, come on. Lito masaka toshke lembragoske he. La da 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 da. La barabam bragoste lemente corosia. Rinto tenda koshe lesa. Le do 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 la brakashakova. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, Jesus, hallelujah. Glory, God. No, we're not wasting time. When we pray, God hearkens to the prayers of his people. God answers the prayers of his people. God is a prayer answering God. He never says no to those that come to him. Anybody that came with anticipation, anybody that came to Jesus was blessed. Anybody that had a need and came to pray, they were blessed. Come on, pray. Something is about to break loose. Lord, I pray against the powers of the spirits of the demonic powers that are trying to stop our people from becoming a people of prayer. I bind those spirits and cast them out in Jesus' name. Lord, today I release a fresh anointing i release a fresh empowerment i release a fresh fire receive that fire receive that fire receive that fire come on thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you holy ghost thank you holy spirit god hallelujah father this morning as we come round the word, I pray that you'd open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our hearts to perceive. God help us. God help us, I pray, that everyone, Lord, that is listening to this word, whether it's now or later, will be blessed immensely, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. People of God, listen to me. Those that are sitting at the back, Please make it on time. At 8 o'clock, we have a time of prayer. I'm telling you, you will not be wasting your time. By coming early and praying, something will happen in your life. Don't walk in casually. Please, as a pastor, I'm begging you. Because I desire to see you succeed in life. I desire. This is not religion. This is reality. And I'm telling you, there is a real devil that does not want you to progress. That does not want you to go forward. That does not want you to win in life. But if you will persist in God, if you will discipline yourself, yourself and say I'm gonna be there in church for prayer at 5 30 on Friday nights at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning come on come and see give me time few months and see what God will do in your life but come consistently don't don't listen I'm not joking I'm telling you I'm serious I want you to win in life God wants you to win in life more than you desire but it cannot happen with a casual attitude. You have to say, no way. I'm going to crush the devil under my feet. But it's not with willpower. It is by prayer power. Amen. As you pray, the anointing of the Holy Ghost will cause you to walk over the devils that are harassing you today. They will no longer harass you. You will turn them around and you'll put them and you'll chase them. Hallelujah. You'll cause them to run away from you. But you got to be learn you got to be a man and a woman of prayer. Please, please, I request you. Please come on time and be here together. Let's pray and see what God will do. You know, I'm telling you, you are not wasting your time. You will be blessed immensely. Amen. Amen. Take your seats. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We've been dealing on the subject of hope and I desire. And I purpose to, uh, to finish that today. Let's go to Psalm 147 verse 11, please. Psalm 147 verse 11. 
The Lord delights in those who fear Him, who put their hope in His unfailing love. The Lord delights in those who hope in His unfailing love. Praise God. When you begin to look at the unfailing love of God, your hope is stirred. Amen? Look, Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. He's called the God of hope. He's a God who gives hope to the hopeless. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what challenges you're facing. I don't know what the problems you have. But I am here to introduce to you a God who is called the God of hope. Don't close the file. Don't shut it. Don't, sh don't say this case is over. No. Even if everybody around you says it's all over, it's not over. Praise God. Because I believe in a God of hope. And this God gives joy. Hallelujah. This God gives me peace. Hallelujah to Jesus. I have so much more, but because of time, I'm not reading all that. But as we're looking at the subject of hope, what did we say? Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We establish the fact that without hope, faith has no direction. But again, once again, let me remind you, hope is an earnest expectation. It's a serious state of anticipation. You're looking for it. You know your, your eyes are fixed on that, not the natural eyes, not these optical eyes. I'm talking about your eyes of imagination, eyes of the spirit realm. You're focused on that. And, you're, and what makes you believe that what you're seeing there will come to pass is your faith in God and His Word. It's not your strength. It's not vain imagination that I'm talking about. I'm talking of an imagination, hope that has been stirred by the Spirit of God. By listening to His Word. You know, the, the, the Word of God is the source of all hope. What did we say? Last time we were talking about the women with, with the issue of blood. And we said, when she heard about Jesus. See, that's why you need to be in the atmosphere where the Word is being preached. Not a word of condemnation, but a word of reconciliation. A word of encouragement. The word with the, that will stir hope and faith. Because the word is the source for hope and faith. So you've got to position yourself. You got, that's why you need to make it to church. That's why you need to come and sit in the atmosphere. It's not just listening. It's being in the atmosphere and listening. Where you're not distracted, but the atmosphere of the presence of God, the glory of God, causes you to be in awe. And as you open your ears, you begin to hear. And I'm not talking about these external ears, your inner ears. Because Jesus said, he that hath ears, let him hear. There were all these thousands of people hearing him. And yet he said, he that hath ears, let him hear. That means you can hear and not hear. So you can be listening to a message on YouTube, but not hearing it. That's why it's important that we seclude ourselves. This is, that this is saying to ourselves and to the world, this time is for between me and my God. I have an appointment with God. I have a date with God. I'm going to give myself to Him, and I'm going to listen. I'm going to sit down and listen. What did the prophet say? The prophet said, I will get to my watchtower and I'll see what he has to say. So Jesus said, get into your closet. It's a me time with God. Amen? It's a me time with God. Th see, this is a time where you're exposing your heart so that the word can come and give you hope to the hopeless. When she heard the word, Although everybody in the world said there is no way you're going to come out of this. She heard and she hoped. She saw something. Because you see, how do I know it was real to her? Because what she saw, she began to say. 
When the picture inside you becomes real, you'll begin to speak about it. And you'll speak with confidence. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. It's not saying, pastor told me to say I was healed. So I will say I was healed. You're not convinced. You're not seeing the picture. You're, you're trying to see the picture that the pastor told you. No. Until you grasp the picture, it does not become a reality in you. So as long as you see yourself broke, busted, lack, you'll never come out of it. But the word will give you hope that you don't have to stay there. You may have been there, but you're not going to be there. Something is happening in you because the word is saying, because of the understanding I'm receiving from the word of God, I reject my present position to occupy the new that God is creating in my spirit or in my imagination, in my understanding. The word is telling me that I don't have to be in lack, but the Bible says I'll be blessed to be a blessing. How can I bless somebody when I'm in lack? When I'm struggling to make the ends meet, how can I be a blessing to somebody else? No, that is not my place. That may be what I'm experiencing right now, but I'm going to kick it out of my life. It's not just by determination. It is by hope and by faith. I first have to see the picture. Remember what happened in the, in the book of uh, Mark chapter 5 again in, uh, regarding Jairus. The Bible says that Jairus came to Jesus. Let me read that very quickly, please. In verse 21 of chapter 5 in Mark, it says, And when Jesus was passed over again by the ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. 22. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. All right. Jairus comes, falls at the feet of Jesus. Now, this is a... You've got to understand. It was a bold step for Jairus. He was a leader of the synagogue. He was falling at the feet of somebody that the leadership did not accept as a teacher of the law now and besought him greatly saying besought him greatly means what prayed hallelujah he was praying my little daughter lieth at the point of death i pray thee come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live look at the declaration before he came something must have happened Somebody would have had to tell him about Jesus. That he was raising the dead. He was healing the sick. He was cleansing the lepers. Giving sight to the blind. And making people who were deaf to hear. He heard about the good reports. Listen. When you hear the word, it should inspire hope and faith in you. There was nobody in the world with all the influence that he had. Jairus had no help in the natural world. He was the leader of the synagogue. That means he was highly respected in that community. Every person, every male came to that synagogue in that community. That was their church. So no, there would have been no prominent person in that community that did not know Jairus. But nobody could help him. Not their wealth, not their influence, not whatever they had. But he heard about Jesus. Today I'm talking to you. I don't know what your problem is. I don't know what you're facing. But I can tell you this. My Jesus can solve your problem. My Jesus can heal your body. My Jesus can set you free. I don't know how long you've been addicted for. But I'm telling you, there is a power in this place right now to break that addiction over your life. Come on, in the name of Jesus, I want you to see yourself free from alcohol, free from pornography, free from all kinds of addictions that you've been addicted to. The power of God is here. You might have tried in your own strength. You might have tried various programs. It did not work. But I'm here to tell you, the case is not closed. You're not hopeless. Pastor, I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tried for so long. I, you know, they told me about this and they told me about that. I've done everything. It's not working. All right. That may be a fact, but I've come with good news. There is somebody that can help you. And not tomorrow, right now. This moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He fell at his feet. He said, Lord, look at, look at what he's saying. Come and lay your hands 
and she shall live. Watch. What is he saying? He is saying what he is seeing. He saw an image. He saw his daughter at the point of death. And he saw inside him his imagination. The master, if only the, I can convince the master to come. And if he came home and he laid his hands, my daughter will live. My daughter will live. All I need to do is I have to convince the master to come to my house. There is no question about whether she will live or not. He didn't say, come, maybe she will live. No, she shall live. That means she will live. Look, when there was no hope, and he heard about Jesus, all that he was doing, something happened. A new image was birthed in him. People around him may not have believed. But watch what happened. On the way, Jesus was delayed, in a sense, but not really, because there was a purpose in everything. And the guy said, don't trouble the master anymore, because your daughter is dead. He said, hey, hold it. Don't lose the picture, because you speak out of the abundance of your, no, 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 out of the abundance of the pictures you hold in your heart. What is the picture? The picture is you had a picture of your daughter being raised from the dead, right? Hold it. Don't say another word. Because if you speak anything against it, it will squash. It will cancel that picture and it will be replaced by the picture that is created through doubt. Are you with me everybody? You that is struggling for a job and who has tried everywhere. You've run from pillar to post. You've used influence. You've talked to different people. Nothing has happened. Let me tell you. Where there is no job just for you, God will create a job. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Tr work on staying in the will of God. Not trying to run away from the will of God. Jesus. Good news always triggers hope. That is the reason why the gospel is called the good news. When do I know I have faith? Say, when you're inspired in an atmosphere like this to believe for something, you know what's happening? A picture is being framed inside you. Okay? A picture of hope is being painted. But now it's your responsibility to strengthen that picture. To the degree and to the point where you are fully persuaded. Watch this. Abraham, in Romans 4, 20, 21, the Bible says, he was fully persuaded that he who promised was well able to perform it. But to get to that point, what was he doing? He considered not his own body, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. See, what you consider, watch this, what you consider is what paints the picture in your heart. That means what you focus on is, has the legitimate right, right to work on your picture in your imagination. So, it's not enough just, that's why confession comes in, is so important. I just can't say, I was healed once. I start by saying I'm healed. There's a faint picture because there are other inputs. The input is from pain. The input is from symptoms. And all these are saying you're sick, you're sick, you're sick, you're sick. They're have, they're, all these have voices. Right? And so as those voices are speaking, a picture is being painted inside you saying what? I'm sick. And then there's a voice of what you have learned in school. Oh, don't worry. This is hereditary. What else do you expect? 
So there is a voice that's speaking. Now all these are painting a picture saying, you cannot avoid it. But when you come into an atmosphere like this, and we are told that the power of God, the Word, has the power to change your genetic code. And you're not a victim of your hereditary curses. And you can, you can break loose from that and whatever your father, your mother, your aunt, your uncle, whatever they suffer from, you don't have to and you don't have to let the, that curse to go through this line. Faith begins to rise. There's a new picture being birthed. But wait, the new picture is like a fetus. It is not fully formed. Are you with me? So when the fetus comes into play, what do we tell people who are pregnant like that in the early? Be careful. Check your diet. Come on. Take it easy. Am I right? So what are we doing? We're trying to help that woman to build what is inside her. So that when the time comes, she will bring forth a beautiful baby. But see... Now, the moment that fetus or that little formation, she's conceived, we know she's conceived, what happens? Immediately, we start paying attention to that. And we neglect everything else. So likewise, when the Word of God comes and hope is birthed, it's not automatic. Faith is not automatic. You have to now start feeding your faith. Something has started, but it's not completed. So the Bible says, Abraham grew stronger by giving thanks. So there are things I got to do. I do not, I should not consider things that will deplete and cause me to deplete in faith and cause me to doubt that image. But I have to do everything to build that. What do I do? I pray. What do I do? I worship. What do I do? I listen to the word. What do I do? I speak the word. See, it's not one key. The Bible says God gave G Peter, Jesus gave Peter what? The keys to the kingdom. Remember, all these things are possessed through combination keys. Because it's a combination lock. It's not just prayer. It's not just word. It's not just worship. All are important keys to unlock, to possess what God has. But you see, when that, for, when that is formed, we now have to pay attention to it and begin to build it. Begin to observe closely. Not doing anything religiously, but having a relationship with God and letting Him work in us. Jesus said, I will come. And He got up from where He was and He was going. He saw. God always can see faith. Let me say something. Faith can be seen. Faith can be seen. When the, when the paralyzed person was brought by his four friends, and they tore open the roof, and they lowered him, you know what the Bible says? Jesus seeing their faith. What does that tell you? Faith can be seen. And when God sees that faith is, is established, it's only a matter of time before it will be delivered. Abraham was fully persuaded. Glory be to God. Faith comes. And in Abraham's case, it was according to that which was spoken. As you, as you listen to the word, you hear what God is saying. That's why you need to have your ears open to hear not only what the preacher is saying, but more importantly, what the word God is saying behind the words of the preacher. There is a word for every one of us this morning. It's not the whole sermon. There is, there is something in the sermon that is, that is for you. And you need to have ears to pick up what that is. The word of God speaks. It is the word that imparts faith to us. 
But friend, listen to me. It's only those that come with expectation that receive anything from Him. Although there may be multitudes in the church, it's not everybody that gets healed. There may be multitudes that were around Jesus, but not everybody got healed. Because you need to have hope. Listen, hope sees ahead while faith and reinforces confidence to reach out to what is ahead. Faith, sorry, hope sees ahead while faith reinforces confidence to reach out to what is ahead. Faith is a living force targeting a goal set by hope. Let me read that again. Faith is a living force targeting a goal set by a hope. Hope is like a blueprint. You cannot build anything, any building without a blueprint, can you? There are engineers, there are architects over here that would agree with me. Before you buy the cement, before you buy the steel, before you buy the bricks, you first get in touch with an architect or an engineer. And you share with them what you want to build. And they will say, okay. So you want two bedrooms, you want four bedrooms, you want, what is the size you like? How many lounges do you want? How many living spaces do you want? How many bathrooms do you want? They get all the list and, they, and you will say, this is how and this is what it is and this is how the kitchen should be. They'll take all that into their mind and now they draw a picture. Because there has to be clarity between them and you that is wanting that building. Only after that do you think of the materials, because that's when they tell you, we need so many bags of cement, we'll need so many, so much steel, so much this, whatever. That's substance. You don't go for substance before you have the blueprint. Too many people are going for the substance without the blueprint. That's why faith is not working. It has no direction. If I buy a lot of steel, cement, sand, and bring it to a place where it is vacant plot of land and dump it. Will I, next thing, next thing that I see, is it a house? No. I just see a heap of sand, bags of cement, and steel there. It's not a house. But it has, it has, it has the potential to become a house. But it cannot automatically become a house. So it needs what? A picture. Okay, so much steel. Why? What kind of steel? What is the thickness? What is the measurement? You know, all the is important. That's why it's important we spend time in developing the hope before you entertain faith. Come on. Faith cannot work without hope. Can you see how helpless faith is without hope? Can you? Amen. So the question I have to ask every one of us is this. What do you see? What do you see? 2022. Early 2022. What do you see by the end of 2022? What do you see in the next five years? What do you see? Many people don't see anything. Many people keep changing what they see based on what they hear from the media. That's why we're unstable. But if you can focus on what God is saying to you, despite what is happening around you, you will make it. Say Amen. Hallelujah. I wrote this. Hope is a picture you see in your imagination. What you can see today you can't have tomorrow. You must be able to see what lies ahead or else faith has no goal to score. Have you ever seen a football field with no goal posts? It's not called a football field at all. How will you know who is winning? Hope sets the pace. Faith scores the goal. Hope sets the pace. Faith scores the goal. So how far can you see? God will not deliver to you beyond what you can see. Your hope determines how far you can see. And hope comes from where? From the Word of God. For people who sit and say, they keep blaming their 
their parents, they keep blaming their circumstances, they keep blaming everything and everyone except themselves for the plight they're in. Those are called irresponsible people who will never make it in life. But if you realize whatever has happened in the past, my past cannot hold me. Forgetting that which is behind, I will press forward. Behold, I'm doing a new thing, says God. But I have to forget that. That means I have to take responsibility for my own life. I can't sit there blaming people. My, my parents or my in-laws or my brothers or my sisters or my family or anybody else. The government, no matter what, I know. If I connect with God, I have a bright future. Your tomorrow can never be better than your yesterday. Is a wrong statement. Many agreed. Tomorrow has to be better than your yesterday. Without hope, you're not making it. What is the picture you hold? What do you see of yourself? What do you see God calling you to do? I mean, there is... I have to close. We know where God said to Abraham, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward. For all the land which thou seest, thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. If you cannot see it, you cannot have it. If only you see poverty, joblessness, lack, and you consider only those things, you'll never make it in life. You can pray as much as you want, you can be as religious as you want, but you're never going to break through. That's why you have to understand Christianity is not religion, it's a relationship with God, and we're talking about real experiences in life. Say Amen. Amen. If God says you're healed, then see your healing, the condition of your body notwithstanding. If God says you're healed, you're healed. Yes, the symptoms will persist. Yes, the readings will not agree. But you keep seeing yourself healed. See that picture. The battle, listen, the battle is not in your physical body. The battle is in your mind. Because... As you're saying, I'm healed by, your stri by his stripes, your mind is saying, you're a fool. Don't you feel? Don't you see the symptom? Don't you see what you're going through? And that's the battle. So this is where we got to settle the issue. It's in the mind first. It's in the imagination. God says in Psalm 1-3, whatever you lay hands on shall prosper. See your business prospering. Declare that. See your ministry prospering. Declare that. In whatever you're involved in, declare, whatever I lay my hands unto shall prosper. Why? Because God said it. I see it growing. I see it increasing. I see it multiplying. And begin to develop that image on the inside. Believe God. Ignore the economic conditions and allow God to bless you and make you rich. After all, he's the one that gives you the power to get wealth, according to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Hope is busy focusing on the future. Faith is bringing, busy bringing it to the present. Faith is busy focusing on the future, while faith is busy bringing it to the present. You're, listen, I'm going to close with this. You're not in lack because of the country you live in or the lack of education. I want to say that again. You're not in lack because of the country you live in or the lack of education. You're in lack because you're blind. You're, you are in lack because you're blind. Wake up. Let hope rise again. Begin to see beyond your now. Faith has no sense of direction without hope in place. Child of God. We have to become a people of hope. Hope that which, not which the world gives, but the hope that God gives from His Word. 
There's so many things you have to make it a part of your life. Not just reading the Word, but meditating the Word. I just want you to, I, I won't spend too much, now I, I just mentioned this, but maybe next week when we talk, uh, you know, get into the vision part, I want to talk a little bit. Imagine every day when you open your eyes, there stands a huge wall and the gates are shut. And the people that live in there are three times your size. And, you're, and God is saying, meditate on my word. To see what? Not them overcoming you, but you overcoming them. Because I have spoken. Amen. See, the battle is in this area. If I can only begin to see what God sees. This is where the renewing of the mind comes. And it's not easy. This is why you need to pray. Are you with me? Because without prayer, it's not possible in your own strength to begin to imagine what God is saying. Because it will look like a fairy tale or something that's impossible. All right, it happened to Joshua, but who thinks it can happen today? God didn't put it there for nothing. Everything that God did in the past is a prophecy for the future. That means if He did it for Joshua, He's willing to do it for you and I. We might be facing giants in our life. We might be facing a giant called Goliath. Why do I need to read? Not just be able to tell a Sunday school story about David and Goliath, but see myself as David and see the very image that David saw. Look how David spoke. When you speak, you are speaking out of the abundance of the heart. What, is, what has filled your heart? The heart is filled with images, not words. When you say, I'm going to buy a new car, what is, what, what is filling your heart? You see the image of the car. You see yourself sitting behind the wheel. You see yourself driving that car. You see the color of the car. See, it's out of the abundance of the heart. You're saying, I'm going to buy this red colored BMW. It's in your heart. So when David began to speak, he spoke from what he saw. Every one of us speaks from what we see. Praise be to God. I see us being a church that influences this nation. I see us as a voice for the glory of God. I see, listen, we got to see this. If you look at ourselves, oh, we're a small group, we're a minority. This minority thinking has to break first. If you want to really be blessed in this nation, get out of the minority mindset. As long as you think you're a minority, you're going to remain a minority. As long as you think you're a minority, you're going to look to the government for help. As long as you say, I'm a minority, what are you saying? I need help. From where? It's okay if it's from God, but if it's not, it's not okay if it's from the government. If they want to do favors, Thank God. But I'm not going to go and say, because I'm a minority, I want you to do me a favor. No, I'm not a minority. I'm a child of God. Yeah. See, but you've got to break that mold. You've got to think differently. You've got to have hope. Daniel, Shadrach, it was a, not too many people. There was a large number of people that went to the Babylon. But these were only a few people. They were a minority in the nation. But Daniel controlled the policy of the nation. Amen. Kings depended on him. They never claimed, because we are a minority, we need separate seats allotted for us in the medical school. Separate seats allotted that only, even though we don't qualify mentally, intellectually, but because we belong to the minority, we have to be given IAS seats. That's why this nation is in this condition. Intellectual disability, but qualified because of the caste they come from. What nonsense is this? 
Come on, church. You've got to qualify for who you are in Christ. You have the mind of Christ. You've got to be able to compete with the best and come out on top. He was 10 times better than everybody else in the nation. He was not given the position because he was a minority. I don't know how I got onto this subject. Somebody had to listen to me. No, 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 no. This is not how we are supposed to think. This is why the church is in this condition in this nation. They don't fear us. Why? Because we are the minority mentality. Oh, they're powerful. Yes. We don't deny they have power, but the greater one is on our side. You cannot live in fear and expect to dominate. You have to be bold. And the boldness comes from knowing him and loving his word to build a new image on the inside. I am a child of God. I will break through. I will make progress. Not because of my strength, but because of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And with the wisdom of God, I'll press through. Come on. Whoever you are, if you're in a certain kind of business, you've got to be the best. Amen. You've got to be a man that is sought after, not you seeking them for business. No. Whatever field we are in, people have to seek us. They came seeking for Jesus. Amen. Ministry people, let's listen to me. We, we should be people who exhibit and demonstrate God where people seek us. Why? They say he carries the aura and the presence of God. Not with arrogance. No, 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 no. Not with arrogance. Not with pride, but in humility. But please, please, please. You're not going to change anything in this nation by going on darnas. <laughs> fasting to change a policy. You can't fast for God, but you want to fast the so-called fast and sit under a tent trying to shout something when everybody is driving past you and looking at you like you're crazy. <laughs> Nothing is going to change. You spend the same time in his presence, something is going to change. <laughs> By the way, I'm not hitting them, please. I'm not, I, I'm not criticizing what they do. What they believe what they're doing, so God bless them for what they're doing, even those processions and all that. I, I don't like to be a part of that. But I'm just saying, but I'm not criticizing them because whatever the understanding they have and they are believing what they're doing, God bless them in what they're doing. I'm not making fun of anything. Please don't misunderstand me. But I'm saying there has to be a change of mentality, change in the way we see things, change in the way who, to know who we are in Christ. We're not beggars, people. Listen to me, please. We're not beggars. Listen. If you were born in the scheduled caste, was it your fault? Come on. And just because you were born in the high caste, was it your bliss? Was it something you had done in the past? Well, they believe that, but we don't. By the way, no, as far as I know, no, none of the gods that they believe in actually established the caste system. It was man who brought it in segregating and causing these problems and everything is to do what for controlling man Jesus came to liberate man and I'm not talking only about the other religions I'm even talking about the Jewish religion in the days of Jesus they said they were when he fed there were 5,000 men what about the women they were not even considered but Jesus came to liberate the women. And he said, there is no more male or female in Christ Jesus. Jesus is the true liberator, not any government. Come on, the image has to change. You may not have a job today. Let that not tell you you're not making it in life. You may be struggling to get a job right now. Tell yourself, one day I will create jobs. Amen. That's hope. One day I will create jobs. I'm a job creator, not a job seeker. Right now I need a job, yes. But that's not my destiny. I'm getting a job to learn how to do things. How, what it is to learn, what it is to, to work under hierarchy. How, does, how do things function? I don't know. So it is good for me to go through apprenticeship. To learn all this. And then uh, by the grace of God, one day 
of a dream of appointing or providing, not appointing, but providing jobs. Why do governments have more uh, perks for businesses and not individuals? Did you know something? An individual, when he makes money, he pays taxes and then spends money. A business spends money and then pays taxes. Why is that disparity? Because businesses provide jobs. They create jobs. Amen? So you've got to understand this. But today I pray. Come on, stand up. Let's pray. I know, I know we've gone all over the place and you know, we're running out of time, but it's okay. Praise God. I want us to pray. Lord, change. You know, he paid the price. You all have elements with you? Everybody has communion elements. Let's pray, Lord, because of the sacrifice you made on the cross. You died for my sins and shed your blood. Lord, you have given me the new birth. Lord, renew my mind. Help me to renew my mind. Not to think of myself as a grasshopper, but to think of myself as a giant killer. No longer will I be a grasshopper in my mind, but I am a winner and I am a giant killer. Glory be to God. This can happen. This transformation can happen only when I begin to yield myself and expose myself to the word of God. So his word can birth new faith in my heart. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise be to God. Open your mouths and pray. Lord, do this, do this. Come on. Lord, make me a giant killer. First in my thinking. First, Lord, help me to see that image of me like David said I will cut your head off and I'll feed your flesh to the birds of the air come on pray 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 praise God hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Lord Lord I thank you Lord I thank you my God I give you glory hallelujah to Jesus Oh, blessed Holy Spirit, I thank you, Lord. Mighty God, I thank you, Lord. Mighty God, I thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your body was broken, that we may be made one. We thank you for the sacrifice. As often as we do this, you said, remember, hallelujah, we remind ourselves, we're not the, the, the scum of the earth, Lord. We're not a beaten down people. We're not, Lord, a minority. We are your children, my Father. Hallelujah. We're the children of God. We've been made the sons and daughters of God because of this sacrifice. So today, we thank you for the covenant that you established. Thank you, Lord. Your body was broken. We partake of this body this morning with thanksgiving and we say thank you for touching us, healing us, and blessing us in Jesus' name. Praise God. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Lord. Likewise, he took the cup and he said, in this is the new covenant established. Father, we thank you. We are covenant people. We are covenant people. And because of the covenant, Lord, we will always win and not lose. It may appear like we're losing, but no, Lord. We do not accept that. We believe we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. We give thanks unto you as we partake of it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take your seats. Jesus and you are a majority. Jesus and I am a majority. We're nothing without him. He's the only one that can give hope to the hopeless. He's the only one that can wipe away tears. And more than anything else, it's only the blood of Jesus that can cleanse a man or a woman of our sins and cleanse our conscience. Remove that guilt nobody else has. No other sacrifice is accepted before God for the salvation of man. There is no other name given among men 
under heaven whereby man can be saved. Listen to me. If you have never made the Lord Jesus your Lord of your life, you have never asked Him to come into your life, don't postpone it. Today is the day. Let's get ready to bring our tithes and offerings unto the Lord. <clears throat> we should be excited when it's time to give our offerings. You know, it's called increase time. It's an opportunity that God is giving us for increase. It's not a time to shy away, keep away, and not give. Because this is God's system of blessing. This is God's system of providing. When he was taking them out from the nation of Egypt, he was teaching them how to live. And even in the days of Abraham, even before the law was given, Abraham practiced tithing and offering. Every place that he went, listen to me very carefully. It was the ungodly line from Cain onwards that when they went, they built cities. Nimrod built a city. But the godly line built altars. Altar signifies sacrifice. Cities were to bring fame to the person. 
altars were to give glory to God. Abraham, whenever he went to a new place, he built an altar and sacrificed. Learn something. It was not just one offering that Abraham gave. It was not just one instance where he gave the tithe. These are all principles we learn to find out what did our father Abraham do. You know what the Bible says in Isaiah 51? It says in verse 2, Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah. Okay. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. Who called him, and who blessed him, and increased him? He said, look unto them. What does that mean? Study them. See what did they do. Understand. Because I call them, I bless them. Not arbitrarily, but because they did some things. Remember, God is a rewarder. So when Abraham obeyed the commands of God, God released the reward. So as I bring my tithes, and as I bring my offerings unto God, I'm following a system based on principles, walking in obedience with a heart of thanksgiving that causes, stirs something in the spiritual realm that causes God to release the blessing upon my life. I trigger that reaction. So when I bring my tithes and offerings, God is not watching and saying, okay, this person gave, so let me uh, give here. Let this person, no. It's a system already in operation. Whenever I return the tithe, something is triggered and the windows of heaven are automatically caused to open. But watch this. When I do it, I've got to do it with a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving. And God opens the doors and blesses me immensely. No matter who you are, even if you're a student and you receive pocket money, out of that you can tithe. You can bring your offering. See how God will bless you. I'm telling you, God is not a liar. This morning I want to challenge you. Go ahead and sow your precious seed. And believe for great mighty breakthrough miracles in the financial realm. Let me tell you my friend. It did not say pray like Abraham prayed. It said look unto Abraham. What did Abraham do to cause that blessing to manifest in his life? Be a doer. Many in the body of Christ want to pray for financial breakthroughs. There's nothing wrong. After you pray, act. But most of us are praying and waiting for God to act. That's a problem. God will not act until I first act. I'm supposed to take my step in obedience. Then God will act. So don't just pray. Pray and do. Pray and return the tithe. Pray and bring the offering. And see what God will do in your life. Amen? You ready? Let's go ahead. Praise the Lord.